Holy smokes, everybody, I don't want to be an alarmist, but I have to say I'm a little bit even more concerned. On March 3rd, the Federal Reserve cut their federal funds rate by a half of a percent. Well, now, on a Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, they slashed it to zero. That's usually what's done right before a recession. Take a look at this. This is a chart of the effective federal funds rate, which is basically that rate that went to zero over the last 70 years. Look at every time it drops. Take a look at this. Summer of 2007, the rate's at five and a quarter. Then recession, and look at that rate drop to zero, which it's pretty much been at zero for a long time. After that plummet to zero, the Fed started bumping it in 2016, and we've kind of been on this roller coaster of up, and then a little bit of down last year because they raised it too high too fast, and all of a sudden they literally just slashed it to zero, which this website doesn't even have that updated yet, because it's a Sunday. Look at the time before the Great Recession. Here, in 2000, it's 6.4. Boom, slashed to 1.75, then 1.25, then 1. Here's the 89 recession at almost 10%. Boom, slashed down to about 3%. That happened again in 81, in 74, and in 1970. Each of those gray bars, by the way, represent a recession. So you can kind of see how they line up with when rates got slashed big. So in this video, I want to try to make sense of this and understand this. What does this mean for our money, our stocks, our real estate, our mortgages, credit lines? What, like, our interest rates going to be lower for our houses now? What does all of this mean? How do we put this all together and how do we make sense of it? But before I hate that, I want to mention a couple things because I think they're crazy. First, a few weeks ago, I made a video that didn't do super well, but it was a really good technical analysis on why I think if every single American in the United States spends just $87 less per month, just $87 less per month, that means you spend $3 less per day, and every American does that, we will be in a recession. Then I read the notes for the Fed's last surprise meeting when they said they were really uncertain about the market, which is scary. Usually the Fed likes certainty. They like to know what's going on. And just like the stock market, people freak out when there's uncertainty which is different from risk. I'll talk about that more later. Take a look at some of the verbiage from this press release that was just released on Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. It's crazy. Uh, take a look at this. The, I'm not gonna mention some of these words because every time I do, YouTube demonetizes me, which takes away my livelihood. But anyway, something has been bad and the economy has been suffering because of it. And even though the economy came into this strong, now the world economy is significantly affected by this. And even though things have been good and inflation's been stable, we're not certain how crazy things are going to get. And that's why they believe that there is a near-term risk to economic outlook. So they think over the next like, two to six months, we've got some major potential issues that could easily plummet us into a recession. This is like literally that black swan everybody's been talking about, which is like, oh, the market's booming. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, well, how about everybody staying home and not working? Like, who could possibly predict that? But anyway, now we gotta deal with it and pick up the pieces. And then, of course, their outro is kind of like, hey, you know what? We're just gonna keep rates low until we're confident that things are back on track. Quick note, Weeble sent me an email saying their promotion for you to get two free stocks if you deposit $100 with them ends on the 17th. So use that link down below, get those two free stocks with Weeble, especially in crazy times like this. And of course, join me in the courses because I got to mention that, of course. And pretty much every board member voted for this rate slash, except for Loretta, who said, no, nah, we don't have to do that much. Although part of me is a little bit jaded and kind of thinks that whoever got the shortest straw when they drew straws had to be the one to vote against this, just so that news publications and people like me can't go, oh my gosh, it was a unanimous decision. They all agree rates should be zero. Which, by the way, I've got to share this with you because it's a little jaded, but, and I just want to s preface this by saying this is not political. I'm not trying to suggest I'm, I'm pro-Trump or against Trump or I'm in the middle. I'm not saying anything. All I want to convey here is I think it's really interesting that on Saturday, Donald Trump says, hey, I got the power to fire and replace the chairman of the Federal Reserve. And the next day, rates go to zero. 
which ordinarily when, when we see that kind of lineup, a big threat and then rates get a big cut, you think, oh, does that mean Trump pressured Jerome Powell to reduce rates? Maybe, even though the Fed's supposed to be apolitical, they're not supposed to get involved or influenced by this thing. But I actually have this little jaded POV that the reverse could have happened, which let me know what you think about this. But imagine this, Trump, who's the president and has access to a lot of information, hears, oh, Jerome Powell's getting ready to drop rates to zero? Let me tell the world that I have the power to fire the guy unless he drops rates to zero. And he's kind of preempting what the poor guy's gonna do. And now it looks like Jerome Powell's Trump's basically bitch. <laughs> Look, again, this is not political. And, and some of you may think that's mean or evil. And, and some of you may think that's genius. I thought I just had to point it out because I thought it was really interesting when the thought crossed my mind. I'm like, wow, okay, that's one way to look at it. <laughs> okay, so what does this mean? Like literally, what does this mean for mortgage rates, credit line stocks, recession, all this stuff? Well, let's start with what this means for mortgage rates. Well, mortgage rates tend to follow something called the 10-year treasury yield. That is, when that yield goes down, mortgage rates tend to go down. But that yield doesn't always line up with what the Fed is doing. So my guess is because mortgage rates already fell so substantially, kind of expecting the Federal Reserve to reduce rates substantially, I actually don't believe we're going to see mortgage rates trend down much more, at least not yet. I think when we start getting some really bad news in terms of the actual impacts, like, oh crap, companies are going bankrupt, like Carnival and the airlines are filing bankruptcy, and all of a sudden we've got the debt holiday coming in because people can't make their mortgage payments and we've got rent holidays going on. That's when I think mortgage rates are going to fall even more. So me, practically, I don't mind getting a loan today because I know I could always just refinance again in six months if it's lower. That's the cool thing about owning real estate. This is exactly why, folks, you gotta be part of my investing live streams every day at 9 a.m. But anyway, what about stocks? Well, Dow futures right now are already down over 900 points, which is insane. And let me explain exactly why. I may have mentioned this in a prior video, but it's worth explaining again. There's something in stocks known as the emotion of uncertainty. And this is why we call the stock market a graph of human emotion. That is, it's like down in the toilet on Thursday because everybody's sad, more people are passing away and, and, and things are kind of poopy, right? And then all of a sudden the next day, Donald Trump comes out and says, hey, it's all right, we got this under control. You know what? We're gonna declare a state of emergency for the entire country, so a national state of emergency, and boom, stocks skyrocket. Like, that volatility doesn't mean that Tesla is producing less cars or Apple sales are falling, even though those things may be true anyway, but that volatility is happening because of people's emotions. The sad on Thursday, then Friday, it's like, oh good, the government's coming in to help. Woo, this is great news. And then on Sunday, AKA today, we get the Federal Reserve going, uh, broskies, uh, based on our data and Kevin's video saying if everybody spends $3 less per day, we're gonna be in a recession, the, the SHIT is about to hit the fan. So let's just cut rates really, really low, at least until things get better. And boom, stock market plummets again. Yeah, like that's how it works. Like it's it, it makes sense because when I read a Sunday press release by the Fed, of course I'm like, what the f Like, what? What do they know that we don't? So yeah, I mean, look, this isn't gonna stop me from going out there and getting wedge deals in real estate, but what it is gonna do is make me tighten my belt on my rental properties, which is exactly why you should consider being a do-it-yourself property manager in rough times and joining my do-it-yourself property management and rental renovations course. There's a coupon code down below for that as well. But anyway, what else is happening? Well, I guess to wrap up stocks, yeah, look, stocks are going to continue to be insanely volatile because not only is, well, people expiring uncertain, 
but we have no idea. Are we gonna be like China where everything locks down for two months and then it kind of blows over? Or are we gonna be like Italy where one day they have 400 deaths and then today you wake up to news that they have over a thousand deaths, that deaths over doubled overnight because a bunch of people died. Now, I know a lot of people watching my channel are, are younger, like under 40 years old. And look, I get it. Like, I'm like, oh dude, come on. All right, it, like I've had the flu. How bad could it be? But like, it's really bad for people who end up having to go to the hospital, which is like 10 to 20% of people who get this end up in the hospital. If there aren't enough beds, there aren't enough ventilators, the hospital basically has to pick who survives and who goes bye-bye. That sucks, especially when you got a 29-year-old wife who has severe asthma who's almost been taken out by pneumonias multiple times in her life. Like, that's scary. So what about credit lines, like home equity lines of credit or business credit lines? Well, the good news is rates on those things are probably going to plummet with this Fed slash, which basically means credit line or that variable credit that we could use to go buy really good deals in real estate will actually be cheaper to use, which is really good. However, this also means all of these high yield savings account, like, oh, look at me saving money in my Wealthfront or my Robinhood account. Yeah, all that stuff is probably gonna go to dirt cheap. Like I would expect those rates to go down to like 0.3%. That is high yield saving is literally gonna turn into, congratulations, you made 0.3% this month. If you're lucky, realistically, it's a sign that we gotta be out there looking for real investment opportunities. But it also means we have to be prepared in terms of our work. Not only do we have to be able to find good deals, but we have to make sure we have the right jobs and the right tools to be able to work. So this is also definitely the time to start bunkering down and thinking, what job can I do during this madness? Like, what can you do to make money where everybody else is too fearful to do something? So. Folks, hit that button, make that red button gray, okay? Be a part, be a subscriber, be a supporter. But anyway, what about the risk of recession? Well, honestly, I personally believe that quarter one of 2020 might be okay. It, we might not be in a recession. But if this continues for the next three months, to me, there is no doubt that quarter number two in the United States is going to be a recessionary quarter. And if this continues to trickle on to quarter number three, we will have two recessionary quarters in a row. Boom, the United States will be in a recession. And we will all of a sudden have our answer as to why is it that a bull market can go on so long? Well, a bull market can go on so long as there's no black swan that walks across the street. And here we go we've got ourselves a little bit of a disaster. So what's something else that's really practical that I think we should be doing right now? Well, a lot of people say, and, and to me, this is very generic, like, oh, have a three to six month emergency fund. Like, I get it. We've all heard that crap before. I'm like sick and tired of hearing it. My belief is that your best emergency fund right now is A, making sure you stay healthy, but B, figuring out what it is you can do to make money. Even if that means taking a little bit of your emergency fund and spending it on education. Now is a great time to become a loan originator, to do loans for people, a real estate agent to, uh, you know, get your license. So that way when this is all over, you're an agent. You can help people pick up some sweet deals, but you have to know how to pick up good deals. You have to know what good deals are. So learn how to invest in real estate, how to do a property management business. Folks, you could open a property management business during times like this. There are so many many businesses and jobs you could do. There's so much demand that you could take over because people don't wanna go outside. And a lot of it, people think you have to go outside for and you could do virtually. So stay tuned. Thanks so much for watching this. This was sort of a last minute video. I had a totally different video planned for today, but honestly, this, this is what I'm feeling right now. This is what I think. This is what I think is gonna happen in the marketplace. Expect more volatility. I'm still bullish on real estate, though I am fattening the wedge. So when everybody in the news says flatten the curve, you should be thinking fatten the wedge, okay? All right, <laughs> thanks for watching folks, until next time.